In this video, I want to continue working on our reload kind of system. So currently, we have a very ugly kind of way of doing it. So we aim, we shoot. Yeah, that's all fine, but when we, we reload, for example, as you can see, it just kind of, the gun itself, even though we are kind of aiming in the right spot, the gun itself just rotates kind of up and out of the way. And I'm not a huge fan of that. So what we're going to do is we want to go ahead and actually do two things. I'll show you kind of the result of the first one without the other. So after this transform modified bone, what we want to do is we want to have another copy bone, and that's going to be driven by our reload alpha. So we're going to actually kind of do a separate one of these because this is this we'll deal with later. But I, just, I don't want to worry about it right now. But I kind of want to show you the result of what I'm referring to. So let's slide these two bone IK over. And what we're going to do is, here's our copy bone for the right hand. Let's grab that and paste it in. Connect it on up. Let's slide that over a little farther. And then inside of copy bone, if we come over here, we want to uncheck copy translation as we only want it to rotate. And now I can show you the result, which is no difference. Do we reload? It's all the same. However, we have the issue of our aiming is now off. As you can tell, we're to the left of each optic, and when we go to the canted one, we're not even close. But if I set that to zero and do it, everything's, you know, just like it was before. It's all normal. So this alpha here is what we want to drive only when we reload. So when we start reloading, we want to control this value. When we stop reloading, we want to control this value. So obviously when we stop, we're not reloading. We want to set it to zero so that we can actually aim properly. But when we start reloading, we want to increment it up to one. However, even though it is at zero and I reload, we still have, again, the same exact results as if it was at one. Like this. So what we can do to fix that, and that's kind of dictated by how we play our montage. So we want to play a reload montage way earlier. So we want to do that pretty much kind of at the beginning. So we're going to have our slot up here. Now, the thing is, at the same time, we have a shoot animation that it will screw with. So in our montage, we're going to eventually actually want to make two slots. So as you can see, we have the default group for arms. We will probably want to have a separate one just for reloading. But for the time being, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy slot arms and delete everything related to that, and then just drag the two bone IK for the left hand into the fabric node for our left hand IK. Come over to here, where we have play idle. We're gonna go ahead and drop that slot back on in, compile and save. So now, let's look at the result. We aim, we're still still off because of that uh, value being one, but when I reload, it does the same thing. But when I drop it down to zero, as you can see, we aim just fine. But when I reload, the gun doesn't move. So it stays with the same rotation. So when we go to reload, what we're going to want to do, and again, this will be in the future, is we want to perhaps increase this a bit. So let's say we reload. We want to have a little bit of sway or rotation applied. So we can bump this up to, actually, let's do like 0 0.7 something higher. So when I reload now, as you can see, it applies some rotation to it. I bump it down to 0 0.4. We have less rotation applied to it. So we obviously want to kind of have some kind of variance in this. So I guess it's want to kind of maybe figure out like a little bit of a curve that goes between 0 and 1 and just kind of have it be a little bit random. So we'll play by that curve as we are reloading. So for now, we're going to leave this at zero. So that way we can aim down our sights properly. And here's the look at the new fire animation setup. As you can see, it's nothing. So we want to apply the fire after. So we're going to want to do that after the two bone okay and before the fabric node. 
So let's head back to our first person fire montage. We're gonna go ahead and just add a new, I don't want a new group. I do want a new slot. So let's head over here to the slot manager. Should be able to add a slot. Let's call it reload. We have two now. So slot name. I think I can just click this and change it to reload. Or will that break it? No, that changes the entire thing to reload. How can I separate these here? Let me think for a second. I'm trying to remember. I have two slots. Ah, there we go. And that ran into two default slot. So I'm just going to delete our, delete our reload slot. Then rename default slot to... No, that's new slot. Once you rename our... Oh, okay. So it does reload it. So change it to reload. What are you going to complain about? All right, whatever. We'll add a new slot, call it reload. Change this one to reload, and then delete the default slot. So now we have two slots, one arms, one reload. And they all still play the same. So we can switch between these. So if we go back to our blueprint here, or we're going to copy our slot arms, paste it over here, come up here to slot name and change it to reload. Or sorry, change it back to arms. We want to change this one that's at the beginning to reload. That's my bad. Then we just have to link it up. So source goes into the two bone IK, which needs to be converted. Then the output goes into the fabric node, which needs to be converted. So let's save it and look at it. So that's all back to normal. And so is our reload. So we know we are good to go. Let's just confirm it one more time. Let's bump this up to, wait a second, did that, I'm trying to think, did that break it? Are you not playing or what are you doing? Let's see, I should be able to set the slot manually, I thought. I'm trying to think. Let's see. Let me look up real quick. I can't remember how to set the slot, so I'll be right back. Alrighty. Well, I didn't have much in terms of luck here, so what I'm going to do is instead, I'm just going to remove the slots as well as remove our reload from this section. So we're still going to have our reload finished event. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that from there, save it, and we're going to create another montage. Let's go back to animations. Animation, animation montage for the arms. So this is going to be first person reload underscore montage just to keep the naming somewhat intact. And we're going to drag out reload. Did it? There it is. I'm not exactly sure what that is there. Oh well. Once we have that, I'm going to change the slot group to reload, save it, and now hopefully we should be good. So we don't have a base pose. So the one we're using for the fire is the idle. Let's set that to the idle, and there we go. Now back in our blueprint here, we have our slot for reload and our slot for arms, and that should be playing accordingly. So that's slot reload. And that's slot arms, so let's see. That's fine. We reload. And the reload is not playing correctly. So the reload... Let's see. So we're playing a different montage. We're actually playing the fire montage when we try to reload. Whoops, which is right here. No, right here. So there's our fire montage. So we want to have another one just for reloading. So let's find our fire animation, copy it, paste it, and change it to reload animation. Copy that. And simply replace it. Well, 
Let's go ahead and close down the editor. Rerun it. All right, then reopen the assets. And here's our first person character, which we go through. Here's our reload animation. Let's set that to the reload montage. Save it. Now when we reload, press R, we play the animation, we shoot. We still play the animation, however, we do not have it to be triggered or the arm to snap back. So we need to set the reload alpha back. So we can do that with our reload montage. So somewhere around in, what was it about this point when it started going forwards? We did a notify, so we're going to re-add that notify. Tab. Yep, there's our reload finished. Save it. And this should still get fired again, so let's try it. Reload. And it goes right back to the position. So when we reload normally, rotates when we aim, it does not. So, that means our system is pretty much good to go. We have our additive reload animation, so we can reload while aiming down sights. Obviously, the animation flat out sucks, but that's kind of my bad. So, one thing we can do to improve it is, like I said, it's controlled by this alpha value. So, I was thinking we could have a simple curve, and we'll play kind of like at random points on that curve and interpolate to the values to give it some kind of, a little bit of shake to it so it's not so stiff. So, anyhow, uh, we could also even just use our reload alpha as well if we wanted to to make it kind of can't, but that would give us the same result as not having this node. So this node we would just pretty much use, again, to interpolate the alpha value at some point through the curve. So this would be useful if you had a weapon class or the firearm class and you had a curve on that class, so you can make it specific to each gun. So for example, some of them will not have, like, they're only going to have a value of one. So something like Something that's belt fed, for example, where you're not going to be reloading while aiming, you would probably have that set to one so that way, or something like that, or something that controls the aiming alpha as well, to where you are not going to be, uh, what do you call it? You're not going to be fully aiming while you're reloading because that's kind of an issue. That's That's a pretty heavy sucker. And then something like an M4, for example, that would be relatively light, and you would have very little rotation applied to the reload animation, so you would just probably go between some values between 0 and like 0 0.3, for example, just to give a little bit of shake to it. But anyways, that's to uh, be done later. I don't even know if I'm going to touch on that, because really that's up to your own implementation on how you would want to go about doing this. Anyways. This is going on long enough. Uh, in the next video, I want to clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to actually separate this and cache some of the poses just to simplify it. So I will see you in that one. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for patrons, as well as you get early access to nearly all of my videos, well, such as this one. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So. I'll see you in the next video.